If she so, so shall you weep. They will pay dear for their night's work. Tom Fine is with them. We're at school together. I fancy Master Fine has seen the last of school, nephew. What'll happen to him? What happens to all who run cargo with the contrabanders? He will hang. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. And all the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. company early then, Master Block, with that fire. Who killed my son? Your son was a contrabander. Who killed my son? All right. It was a cruel, cruel thing to fire upon so young a lad. And trouble is likely to come to the other poor fellas taken. Lawyer Empson says three of them will surely hang at the next assize. They hang four of the contrabanders after that scuffle between the Royal Sophie and the Marne Hall. <laughs> My old father caught his death a cold. But was going to Dorchester to see the poor chaps turned off and... Standing up to his knees in the river Froom to get sight of him. There. That's enough for tonight. Now, you've helped with the lantern. So come with me to the Why Not Inn. And I'll have a word with Elsevier, who sadly needs the words of kindly friends to cheer him. And we'll find you a glass of Hollands to keep out the evening chills. How's your aunt? Oh, she's well. Youth is but a fleeting thing. You'll soon be quit of it. And your aunt's Bible preaching. She thinks only of your welfare. Aye, the straight and narrow path. It may be the path of righteousness, but it seems to me there's little adventure to be had along that way. You had a young friend who sought adventure. Tom Fine. Think on him. Evening, Elsevier. Good evening, Master Block. What does this boy want? He wants the same as I want. A glass of iron at to keep out the evening chill. Cow's milk is best for children. And John's no child. He's the same age as David. And comes now from helping me finish his headstone. By Monday, the ships will be painted on, and it'll be set fair and square in the churchyard. And then the poor lad may rest in peace. Aye. David rests in peace. It is they that brought him to his end shall not rest in peace. When their time comes, and it may come sooner than they think. Elsevier, that man Maskew is damned. He may not set foot in Moonfleet without rousing the hatred of everyone he chances to meet. Little he cares for their hatred, or their damning of them. 
Let not thy mind brood on it, nor seek to get thyself avenged. Leave it to providence. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Then I shall do the Lord's work for him. But I tell you, old friend, if it costs everything I have, I, even my own life, I'll be revenged on Magistrate Maskew. And I swear. Here. Take it, lad. It'll do thee no good, but it may do thee no harm. <coughs> Come, Elzevir. Stir thy thoughts to one game of backgammon. Can you understand such words as these, John? No, Master Ramsey. Nor I. As in life, so in a game of hazard. Skill will make something even of the worst of throws. Seaman looking for a berth for the night. I sent him to the three choughs at Ringstave. Lad, it is time for you to go home. Men say the ghost of Blackbeard walks at night when the moon is full. He doesn't seem to exist in your home. Do you believe that legend? It is more than mere legend. Aye, I think it to be so. Well, three months ago, my aunt was taken ill in the night, and I had to run to Rinscape for Dr. Hawkins. Well, I took the path along the downs that overlooks the church, and there I saw a light moving to and fro about the churchyard. A light, you say? Aye. Do they tell if Blackbeard carries a lantern when he rises from his grave? Aye. A lantern lit for him by the devil himself. Beware of the churchyard at night, young John. see some of you managed here today. I feared last night's storm would have kept you all away. The Sexton Ratsy has done his best, but I fear we are on the losing side in this battle with the elements. <coughs> he sends a cleansing rain to wash away the sorrow we have known this past few months. I speak, of course, of the death of a young son of this parish. David Block. He broke the law of this land and paid the ultimate price. But I, like many of you here, remember the other David Block. The young boy who ran to my schoolroom, eager to be first in his place. The boy who always had time to help our sexton with the work in the churchyard. 
a young boy who believed in his God and was full of hope for the future. Now other children fill those schoolroom places. Who knows what fate has in store for them? Life is very like the letter Y. In each man's life, there comes a point where the two roads part, like the arms of a Y. And everyone must choose for himself whether he will follow the broad and sloping path on the left or the steep and narrow path on the right. For if you will look in your books, you will see that the letter Y is not like the moon. Oh, Master, how ever can he bide their preaching when the moons be rising from their graves? Oh, Lord's sakes, tis Blackbeard come to claim his diamond. We shall all be thralls like Cracky Jones. Stay if you will, and let Blackbeard rise up and take you by the throat like he did Cracky Jones. But I shall not. Come, Grace. Sit still, Joy. Fools. The Lord has sent evil angels among us, Master Glenny. It is terrible to hear dead men moving beneath our feet. Tut, tut. It is only their own fears that make such noises terrible. These noises are certainly nature's work. Floods have filled the vault, and the coffins getting afloat jostle one another. Then being hollow, they give forth these sounds you hear. Oh, it is true, the dead do move beneath our feet. But it is because they cannot help themselves. Well, you should know better than to frighten a boy with silly talk of spirits when the truth is bad enough. Well, Master, I'm a plain man, but saving your presence, I hold it a fond thing not to take heed of such warnings as are given us. It is said when the moons move, then Moonfleet mourns. The last time they moved was during the great storm in Queen Anne's second year. And as for frightening children, it is well boys should learn not to pry into what does not concern them. My son, all I can gather is that Blackbeard was one Colonel John Moon who died about a hundred years ago. He was a corrupt and evil man who by his excesses lost all his family's wealth and even let the almshouses fall to ruin, so turning away the poor. Then, at the end of his life, being filled with fear and remorse, he wished to make amends by leaving that ill-gotten treasure for the repair and support of the almshouses. He made a will, which I have seen, to this effect. But without describing the treasure further, then to call it a diamond. Well, doubtless, he meant to get it himself, sell it, and afterwards apply the profit to his good purpose. But before he could do so, death caught him to account. And that is why men say he cannot rest in his grave and never will until the treasure is found and spent upon the poor. Do you believe the legend, Mr. Glenny? Could there be a diamond buried somewhere in the churchyard? Well, apparitions, both of good and evil spirits, are related in the Holy Scriptures. But the churchyard is an unlikely spot for Colonel Moon to settle his treasure in. But had it been buried there, he would have had many chances to have it up in his lifetime. When was the last coffin laid to rest in the vault, Arnold? Forty years ago, Gerald Moore. He burst a blood vessel drinking at Weymouth Races and died. But surely after 40 years, wooden coffins would be rotten. What of it? Well, if they are rotten, how can they float and make a noise when they collide? I do not know, nor wish to know. If the moons are to rise from the earth, 
And would they choose a time when I am safely home behind locked doors? See you tomorrow. Bye. Day. Good day, John. And uh, what might you be doing in the churchyard this fine morning? I've come to listen if the moons are moving. Oh, that I can't tell you. I haven't time to waste on such matters when I have to um, uh, examine these walls for flood damage. But if you've such time to waste, then go back to my workshop and get my plaster's hammer, which I've left behind, so that I may try this mortar. I waited for you yesterday at Paxton's Cross. Oh, I'm sorry. My aunt made me clean her pewter. By the time I'd finished, I knew you'd have gone home. Can we meet tonight? If I can get away from the house. My father watches me like a hawk. He says it's for my own safety. Oh, Grace, no one would harm you. It's your father they all hate. Have you heard what's to become of Tom Fine? Father says he's to be tried with the others at Dorchester Assizes. Aye. And duly executed if I know what. Oh, I hope not. I fear you hope in vain. A life for a keg of French wine. His crime was to be born poor. Not all poor men choose to run cargoes. Not all criminals get caught. Those who'll sit in judgment of him at the Assizes have enjoyed many a fine French wine that found its way ashore under cover of night. Aye, and knew from whence it came, although they pretended otherwise. And will they pay for their part in the crime? No. They'll stretch Tom Fine's neck and claim they've done their duty, and then sit down to dinner and enjoy some more French wine. It seems to me there are many judges in this world, and precious little justice. Are these crimes so great that men must die for them? believe the story of the moon treasure? I have no interest in anything stupid, nephew, and well you know it. John, I have observed that you are out and about at night, sometimes as late as half past seven or eight. Now it is not seemly for young folk to be abroad after dark. It was with such loafing your father began his wild ways. 
So understand, I will not have you out this evening nor any other evening after dark. Bed is the place for youth. When night falls, And if this seems too early, you can sit with me for an hour and I will read you a discourse of Dr. Sherlock that will leave you in a fit frame for quiet sleep. Now, the happiness of mankind consists in the knowledge and love of God, who is the greatest and best being and therefore our good God, who is never wanting to his own glory and the happiness of his creatures, has taken in all ages by one means or other.
I'm very mysterious. And John gets involved with the smugglers and is missed in the village, but we shall find out what happens next week in Moonfleet. Just got a little letter here from Esther Jones. She lives in Bridport. So does her brother Stephen. Happy birthday. I've been played with.